Okay, welcome everyone. Let me see if I can. So again, welcome everyone to the conversations on decoloniality and fashion. Most of you know us by now, but I still want to remind everyone to be respectful, to share this space, to make this a welcoming space, um, and to be respectful again of everyone's learning and unlearning. So we will start with the first 30 minutes where we'll reflect on the selected materials, on the readings, and the first 30 minutes will be recorded, as you know, and then we'll go into the breakout rooms for another 30 minutes and then we come back so we can reflect on what has been learned and unlearned in the breakout sessions. So for this conversations on um, designs for the pluriverse, we are very excited to be welcoming um, Sophie Clear and Eric Wong who are the curators of the podcast series and exhibition In Search of the Pluriverse. They describe the pluriverse as a world where people and other beings live together in harmony with each other and the environment. An equal world in which we together shape a future that truly does have a future. So Sophie Creer, Creer is a relational artist, researcher and editor. Her grandparents were tailors in Lux Luxembourg and teachers with a farming background in Belgium. Through her work, Sophie Creer interweaves biographies of beings and places and conceives tools and situations for collective narration and reflection. Her practice alternates between intense periods of field work with local communities and editorial curatorial work. As she describes it, my work is about mending relationships between beings and places. As an artist and researcher, I interweave histories, imaginaries, and embodied experiences. As an educator and editor, I share and publish these processes. And Eric Wong has a background in graphic design and teaches at the Rietveld Academy in Amsterdam in the TXT departments and founded founded Wongma, a place for work, contemplation, and surprising encounters in the far north of the Netherlands. Wong and Creer met at the Rietveld Academy in 2007, where they both gave shape to different departments. They joined forces in and outside the Academy. Ever since, they work together whenever the universe allows it. And since 2018, under the name Making Radio, they describe making radio as a live radio program about what we make, why we make it, who we are, and in the end or in the beginning, what gives and deprives us and others of humanity. So thank you so much, Sophie and Eric, to be with us here today. Um, I'll give the floor now to Erica, who will be the first to formulate a question. Um. Thank you so much, Angela, and thank you, um, Sophie and Eric. Thank you and welcome um, to the conversation on decoloniality and fashion. So I think really just to open up the conversation, I, I thought, you know, you're draw, you draw on and are guided by Arturo Escobar's designs for the pluriverse, and particularly in New Beginnings, uh, which is part of the exhibition in search for the pluriverse um, that's just opened. You state, we as humans are social beings. We cannot survive without others, yet we're all different. Differences that sometimes seem hard to overcome. How to resolve this problem? Is that the provocation that you kind of put out there? And then, you know, to expand on that, you also speak about autonomies are not institutions, but forms of relation. We need autonomy precisely because we are different. And so drawing on Escobar's words, um, we are building a community of communities. So I'm wondering if you could just share with us your experiences of thinking and practicing both 
pluriversality and decoloniality in your various projects, the podcasts, the exhibition, your ongoing research. I suppose maybe what I'm asking is, what does it mean to you to practice pluriversally or, and decolonially? Thank you. I was thanking Sorry. you, Erica. <laughs> yeah. We were muted. <laughs> and I was thanking Angela. It's good we were muted because we were uh, commenting uh, all kinds yeah. of things all the time. Thank you both, both for the introduction and the question, uh, Erica. It's um, it's a really good question. It's actually part of the um, when you enter the exhibition in in Rotterdam, uh, you are greeted by a, a voiceover uh, from both of us, which ends with uh, we not only wanted to. Um, make an exhibition about the pluriverse. We wanted to make this in a pluriversal way, right? To do this in a pluriversal way. Uh, and then we had to edit some things out <laughs> because uh, we had given some explanations and stuff. And it, it just became this really long list of all the, the tensions that you encounter and the obstacles you encounter when you try to do things pluriversally, right? And now. I'll just maybe name one, a few examples, and then maybe Eric, you can you can take it over from there. But um, starting from the from the end of things, um, usually we only work on a colophon at the very end, right, of a project. Like, oh yeah, and then who do we thank, and etc. And uh, in our case, we wanted this colophon to be non-hierarchical because we thought that would be pluriversal, so not curated by you know Eric Wong and Sophie Creer at the top, and then the least important persons <laughs> at the bottom, least important, uh, but to really name actually everything and everyone that uh, made this exhibition possible. But of course, it's a, just an impossible task because when you start thinking about it, you know, we, we acknowledge Arturo Escobar who himself acknowledges all those that came before him. And then we acknowledge, uh, uh, for example, the cleaners also who maintain the space and who make it possible for the exhibition to look the way it does. Uh, but we wrote to the cleaners to ask them if we could name them. And some of them actually did not want to be named. So then you have to start to find formulas such as uh, um, thank you to all those who prefer not to be named. <laughs> Because there are also uh, persons, and Rolando is, is Rolando Vasquez, who is in your board, is in your sounding board, is one of those I think who think who really believes that working in the shadows is just as important as working, uh, putting things out into the light, right, and, and acknowledging and representing. So he was also um, whispering into our ears, saying, you know, wanting to acknowledge everything is again, uh, in a way not colonizing, but is again wanting to grab everything maybe too much, is it maybe too much a kind of a control. So this is just a tiny example, the colophon of the exhibition, but just that already was a, it was quite a ha hard job to do it pluriversally, let's say, to, to, to think how we could do that, right? And I think that we, we try to make ourselves vulnerable in presenting ourselves as students of the traveling academy. That's the, the construct that we do this Paul search in for, for the Hetnivi Institute. So we're really just students in the pluriverse because we have to learn a lot ourselves and to unlearn, as you say, Angela. And I am, for instance, less far developed as a pluriversalist as Sophie. So we there's also a tension between us sometimes as she says things, well, Eric, you cannot say this, or you sh we should acknowledge this, you know, better. And then I say, well, you know, I don't know if I'm <laughs> ready to do that yet. But I'm happy that you uh, started with the, the letting go chapter of the exhibition because the exhibition is set up in four, uh, it's a narrative that consists of four chapters, which somehow go along with the seasons or moments of the day. So there's, there's a summer, there's a spring, there's an autumn and there's a winter. And the letting go, uh, now the, the new the beginnings. beginnings is the spring part of the exhibition. And that's where the word uh, communalidad is really important. So. The, the idea is, or the, the really sort of very, uh, you know, minimal narrative is that, that, that you wake up after winter, after hibernation, you wake up and you start looking around and you look for, for uh, a 
alliances because things need to be done, but you can't do it alone. So you need to find others to do it with. And um, we talked uh, between ourselves also about um, where would you be, in which, in which chapter of, of the exhibition would you fit best? And uh, I would fit best in the communalidad spheres because I really, I'm very community and human condition like driven. So I'm opening up towards others than humans and to, to the fact that there are there's so much more than us humans that 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 is not the center of the pluriverse. Um, but still I'm most moved and, and challenged and inspired by what, what people try to do to make this world a better place. And in that chapter of the exhibition, you see many examples of people getting together and getting things done. For instance, the Linen Project, which is, a, which is I think, a, an interesting attempt to sort of um, a what if situation. What if we collectively, collectively start to, to farm and grow flax and, and uh, harvest the flax and process the flax into linen and then spin uh, spin the linen and weave the linen into products. So uh, who would like to join and um, how many different uh, tasks are to be there to be divided? And is this a sustainable way of doing things? And how will our relation to this material, this very interesting material that linen and flax is change when we are involved from the very moment that we sow the flax and that we, um, for instance, make make clothes out of it mm -hmm. um, but that's just an example of of one of the the communal uh, projects that we that we try to give um, that we shine a light on in the exhibition and and pascal uh, godson who, who founded the linear project she in the because we share since this whole exhibition is based on our podcast series um we share audio snippets of the podcast in the exhibition and she talks about the fact that in the beginning the project worked with volunteers, but that didn't feel right. So that's also very interesting when you speak of uh, relations, the quality of relations, and it, and they became stewards. Um, and so the Linen Project now currently has 46 stewards, another issue for the coloform, but I won't go back to the coloform. Um, and this, this whole idea of stewardship, as opposed to being volunteers that are part of a project, it's a completely different way of also sharing responsibility. And it's, I think there is a link. I'm now, now that because of your question, Erica, this is now clicking in my mind that maybe this is because this word comunalidad that Eric mentioned, it was Miguel Hervas Gomez, our graphic designer, who explained that word from us. It's in the book by Escobar, but Miguel is, is a Catalan designer. And he, of course, uh, his, he speaks Spanish, we don't. And so he explained to us that it's, it's not Comunalidad cannot be translated as community because comunalidad is the glue that binds the community together. So that's a really beautiful uh, difference already between uh, Spanish or, or the language that is uh, languages that are spoken in, in Latin America and Abiyala or, uh, or English, which where we have the word community and the glue that binds a community together, but we need so many words to put it. And the, the thing, for me also that like really was an eye opener or a learner, learning moment, reading Escobar was that he says that autonomy and communality can go hand in hand, that they are not uh, two opposites because from where I've grown up and, and the education that I received in the arts, it's this idea of autonomy is linked to individuality, autonomous art, you know, contem autonomous contemporary art. Whereas in, um, in Escobar's uh, thinking and in his work is uh, also as an activist, you know, with the, um, the black peasant communities of Colombia and everything. He works on communal autonomy, which are these life projects, life plans, they're actually called. That's a beautiful, and both have a capital letter. And it, it's life plans have like nothing to do with projects, the way we conceive of projects here which have deadlines, which have, you know, budgets, which have hierarchies, which have all kinds of things. Life plans are these kind of trajectories and there's no end to them, you know, and, and it goes beyond the lifetime of one person or one thing. Yeah. Anyway, we are, we're completely, <laughs> we're, we're diverting, Erica. Bring us back to the center, maybe. <laughs> um, 
Um, thank you so much. No, that, that's incredible. I love this idea of, of um, um, something as simple as a as a colophon as being a space in which to decolonize, a space in which to practice that which you're presenting as well. And I think I think it's something that we've spoken about in in, in various occasions. I think Angela and myself were busy um, developing a global fashioning assembly and the same thing at each and every stage is to question the kind of practices that underpin a very simple thing like a colophon or an introduction or a meeting or a, a structure that, yeah. So I, I really yeah, appreciate but we, we also learned from our makers that that sometimes you know you have to step back as an individual and you have to present yourselves as a collective or as a as a as a group of people that has not one leader or one spokesperson or maybe yeah. the, the vocalizer or the spokesperson changes every time <clears throat> so we worked um so the the, the, the the one of the other chapters is called uh, in the heat of the action and that's more about um activism like if you really want to change things you have to sometimes you have to put your body on the line but how does that work and how for us it was really an eye opener for instance just to we are very much yes people Sophie and I are people that say yes to a lot of things like oh yes you know let's do this or yes let's go for that but they really showed us that in you know to be able to say yes to certain things you have to say to say say a very hard no to other things Sometimes you really have to defend, literally you have to defend a territory from the state, for instance, coming in. You have to be on the barricades, literally. It sounds a bit, you know, <clears throat> medieval, but it works like that. If you want to stop something, you sometimes have to say no and be the no, to embody the no. And um, those are also, for us, quite new notions because we are so, you know, la 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 positive in many ways. Um, so to say no um, can be as constructive as to say yes. So that's something that's very uh, present in the exhibition as well. I'm now trying to think like, did we, what no did we say in the exhibition or in our search for the pluriverse so far that really um, was productive? Or have we just been saying yes? <laughs> Trying to check if we actually did did what you're saying. Oh, we said yes too many times, and that that gave us budget problems because we wanted to involve. Oh yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of. Uh, okay. Do you want to talk about no, that? No, you say. It. I'll take it over. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the, the the saying yes brought us a, a little bit on the brink of what's you know if you say yes 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 to 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 an ever expanding plan and an ever expanding network of makers and you all want to include them in, in into one physical exhibition which has a very limited budget to work with in a respectful you way you end up um, you know you end up be, be being in problems so we 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 had to so we said yes to thirty two makers or collectives or or institute or organizations or individuals and uh, but in the end we had to say no to four of them because there was no money for it we were really being you know hold back by that by had institute which was quite painful so we really had to think of something to 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 make that absence of these four makers that we had to pull out to make their absence present maybe so we can say something about mm -hmm. how we tried to do that yeah, and the way we did it is uh, one of the ways was to say, okay, there will be a physical exhibition and there is also an online version, which uh, parts of those we shared with you in preparation to today's conversation. Um, and so, so some of the voices that are not present in the galleries of Head New Institute, they are still present online. And you can, but, and we redirect the physical visitors to that online presence through postcards, which we printed out in a large edition and these postcards ask the visitor actually to choose one of these four absent present makers and give them a place in the, the question is give one of these makers a place in your pluriverse so we we actually kind of uh, hand over 
the, the kind of life trajectory or the practice of that maker to, to the visitor saying, these four persons are not present, their practices are not present physically in this exhibition, but you can help us um, share their practices and, and, sh and bring them under, under the attention of persons for whom it might be interesting. And for example, one such person is Suzanne Dalival. She's an inclusive uh, climate campaigner. And uh, so she, she's really an activist in uh, showing the white supremacy that is also really, really pr a presence, a present in the climate movement. Um, and she had an amazing plan for uh, an inverted uh, megaphone. It's also her logo. She kind of listens with a megaphone. So she's in, she doesn't just enunciate and speak, but she listens with it to the, to the world because she says maybe listening is the new form of campaigning that this world needs. Uh, radical listening, you know, and not, and not just more statements and more one-liners. Um, and so we were able through, and that, that's, that's where the detouring comes in, we were able through another budget line uh, of the of Het New Institute, uh, thanks to Joyce Hansen, our project manager, to invite her on this a program called the International Visitors Program. So she gave the opening lecture on the opening night of the exhibition. So she wasn't present in the show for the full four months, but she gave, you know, the opening lecture. And she was there the whole weekend and we were able to make her part of the network in, in that way. And now Eric, as a spin-off, is going to do... Um, yeah, we say yes a lot. He's still going time. to so, work on this megaphone, inverted megaphone thing. Yeah, because the, the megaphone, it was it's a kind of a ongoing story. The megaphone wasn't... That was supposed to be an inverted megaphone that she could use during her performance lecture workshop thing. But in the end, it wasn't there. Because there was too much other things there was to do. There too were much, just no more hours. No, there were no more hours. But then she said, and I was really, um, that was really good to hear um, for the exhibition also, is that she said, you know, there are a lot of voices being voiced in the exhibition. But where are the sounds, where are the other sounds this planet makes? So where's the sound of the sea or the sound of the wind? Well, we do have a piece that's about the- A leaf breathing. Yeah, and, it's, and we also have a sound piece that is, that's about the sexual energy the wind contains and that we as humans can sort of, you know, engage sexually with, with, with the wind as, as, as a force. But further, there's, there, there is a lot of human voices to, to listen to. So with her and meeting her in, in real was really nice because I, 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 I liked her story and she's also very much into, in, into using pop culture and, and sort of pop Netflix like yeah, to narratives to, to sort of use them to create new narratives that reaches a broader audience than just you know, the, the action world. And um, so we decided as, uh, to do a sort of a spin-off. So it goes on and on and on. And that we will, we will use this inverted megaphone and we will send it around in our pluriversal network and we will do field recordings with it. So we will listen to the world and to nature and to whichever place the, the, the inverted megaphone ends up in. And then um, we will combine these field recordings with reflections on it of the maker who recorded those field sounds. So that's going to be a spin-off, spin-off, spin-off of the In Search of the Pluriverse ever-expanding podcast project. Yeah. So that's that's a little bit how we work. And also maybe, yeah, we said a yes to a lot of things, but maybe that also contains sometimes a no. We really said from the beginning on, we really want to work with a spatial designer that doesn't come from our Western sort of modernist Bauhaus. trained Bauhaus art design background. We really want to work some, with somebody who has a completely different mindset, and a completely different frame that, that he or she or they work from. And uh, that's how we ended up with working with Sean Leonard, who we met during one of our warming up talks for the Pluriverse. And he's from Trinidad and Tobago. And he brought in lots of notions that we didn't know. And it was not always easy to to understand each other and also because we are designers still we're not only curators we're also makers which makes it sometimes easier but also sometimes more difficult to make an exhibition uh, with others um, but he for instance brought in the idea of the yard and in the caribbean the yard is a, is a, is a very important social place that's it's somewhere in between the public and the private you could look at it as sort of a, a courtyard 
where, for instance, uh, pan bands like pan orchestras for the carnival, the, the, the drum bands, they practice there. And every pan band had his, has his own yard and uses it to, to practice, but also to perform. So these, the city is, 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 is uh, patched up with all these yards that functioned very socially, but also artistically, and also binds the whole community together. And he describes the yard as a place for negotiation. So it's a very confined space in which many things need to be, need to be done. Eh? And in the past, these yards were also places where people lived that didn't have the, the, the money or the means to buy a house. They would live in the yard of, of people that surrounded, of houses that surrounded this yard, and they were allowed to, 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 to make a little settlement there. But they needed to cook there, to play, to practice, to live. Um, so you need to be able to negotiate um, with each other to see what happens when. So that whole idea of, of looking at a, a confined or constricted space as a place where you negotiate between functions and voices and space and when and what, that's something that we try to, to work with uh, for the exhibition as well. So it's, you could look at it as, as a work floor more than it is, or, yeah, or a try out floor or a thinking floor than it is an actual exhibition that, that exposes something or is yeah sean really challenged the way uh, such an exhibition is designed and also the way it is built so it's really incredible i think in the history of that new institute it never happened before but sean was present on site for three full weeks during the build-up to work directly uh, with the building team with the technical team and be able to also improvise uh, when needed, because the design, his design uh, took into account that he wanted to reuse as much as possible of the previous exhibition, uh, which was an exhibition about Disney, <laughs> and with a lot of the color, uh, ironically, go away green, when actually uh, our motto is, you know, come in, the door is open from the, from the Zapatista. So that was an, an interesting also kind of turning over. But uh, yeah, what, what Sean Leonard did was, we we had a lot of unlearning to do in the in the process of of collaborating with him and it's been super 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 wonderful and, and valuable for us to work with him so well and thank you so much sophie and eric um i would like to suggest now that we then stop the recording and that we can just then open the floor so or questions, maybe more questions.